an article this week that was published on Friday. It's on the home, right on the right on the top of our website. You guys can go check it out over there on the select side, where he said. Basically, how do you beat Esper? Well, here's a bunch of ways to do it with a bunch of different aggro decks. And he put his money where his mouth is, playing a hyper-aggressive red green aggro deck to try to smash these Esper decks. He's been doing it so far. Just one loss here for the player on the right. Player on your left, Jared Betcher, uh, he's on a real hot streak of his own. Even though he's 10-2 and in this particular tournament, he gave BBD his first loss. Also ninth place at his first Pro Tour, which was Pro Tour Born of the Gods, not to mention runner-up at Grand Prix Washington, D.C., top eight of Grand Prix Cincinnati. He's playing Black White Devotion, the deck that he played in Cincinnati, very comfortable with it, and he's going to be employing that strategy here. Tom on the draw, but with a great opening here with Ratchet's Cackler on one and a Burning Tramissary and a second Ratchet's Cackler on turn two. This is your style of deck. You love, you love yourself some beatdowns, don't I you? I do love some beatdowns. Now, Betcher is going to play a turn three Lifebane Zombie, and this, this kind of shows exactly what Tom is playing the exact deck he is because he's not a deck that's really susceptible to Lifebane Zombie. Yes, it did catch a Gore Clan Rampager on that turn, but look at his board as opposed to Betcher's right now. Yeah, although Betcher has to be happy with the pace of the game thus far. If he's able to make his land drops and get to one of his powerful five-mana spells, whether it be Lifebane, Zombie, or even Grey Merchant, he can pretty easily stabilize this game. Ross going to come in here with a bunch of creatures. We'll see which one Betcher wants to block as there's going to be some sort of trade here. So there goes the Burning Tree Mystery. Cacklers will come across. Betcher's going to go down to 14. He'll untap. He'll take a draw here. He has a Blood Baron of a Scope in his hand. He's going to play another copy of Temple of Silence. A little scry action. Top's going to go to the bottom. There's a Night Vale Spectre. That thing's going to block the road as Ross is going to untap and take a draw. Yeah, Night Vale Spectre is, is quietly actually quite good against decks like Tom. I've had a lot of experience myself. Of course, you're playing a lot of 2-2s two for 1 and 2 mana, mm -hmm. and a 2-3 is very good. Now, Night Vale Spectre is actually on the decline. Lifebane Zombie is on the incline. That's part of the reason that you see Tom play a deck like this. If there were more Night Vale Spectres running rampant, he would have to change the build of his deck. Here's an Ashes Zealot, and he's just going to pass the turn back patiently. So and Betcher's going to get the chance to untap and draw. And Tom's in some pretty serious trouble here yep. if, if Jared has one of his powerful fives, and he does in Blood Baron. Blood Baron with Scopa will show up. Ross is going to play a copy of Fanatic of Xenagos. The tribute will be on the stack. You see Betcher's going to take a look at that. We'll do the same as this one's not seeing a lot of play right now, but... The power of it is undeniable, and it may start to pick up here off the back of Ross having a fantastic weekend. Yeah, it's one of the weirder tribute cards that appeared in Born of the Gods, as the difference between its tribute and just allowing it to get its trigger are actually quite similar in a lot of spots. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have seen players tank on it multiple times, not because the tribute and the trigger are so disparate, but actually because they're so similar. Yeah, it's going to be a 4-4 all of the time, it seems like. So see, Betcher's going to play a temple. He's going to put the top card to the bottom. Three mana is going to be tapped. How about four? How about an Erebos, God of the Dead? And it is active, actually. You see the Devotion, three from the Spectre, one from the Blood Baron, and one from Erebos itself. And now Betcher's going to come across for two in the air. Ross is going to go down to 18. Top card coming over to Jared's side. That's the Fanatic of Xenagos. Pretty far away from being able to cast that, but Jared in a pretty commanding position. I like the attack here as Thomas basically needs to find a lightning strike or something similar to kill the Night Vale Spectre to shut off Erebus and mm -hmm. be able to start attacking. And in that world... Jared's much happier having attack last turn than sitting back on defense. I think, I think this game is mighty different if Ross is on the play, but he was not. Oh, of course, yeah. He gets to have a much faster opening here. Jared spends his first two turns just playing lands into play tapped. It's probably at least an additional six points of damage that, that Tom gets access to. Betcher with a thought sees. He's going to fire that off, make sure that the coast is clear. There goes a Legion Loyalist to the graveyard. He will take two to know that he can do what he needs to do here. Three mana. This is a hero's downfall. Get that fanatic as then it goes out of here. Looks like Blood Baron's ready to come to the party, and it is. So an attacker with a 4 4 and a 2 3. No good blocks, obviously, for Ross. So Betcher's going to deal six points of damage. Trigger from Nightfield is going to show a lightning strike. That's a card that Ross could use there. And now Erebos is happily back on defense as Ross is going to draw a card and just pass the turn back. A little interesting to see Jared not get in with Erebos last turn. That felt like a pretty good spot, but the position he's in so commanding that can, he can have afford to be a little conservative. He's playing a, bit, a little bit of a mix of offense and defense as he does activate Erebos. Pays two life for another card here. You see the hero's downfall there in Betcher's hand along two cop, two swamps, excuse me. So Betcher is definitely in the driver's seat. That's going to get that off of the table. We might see Erebos come in now, and we do. And we're going to see a lethal attack. So Jared Betcher is going to win game number one here over Tom Ross, number one right now in our Open Series Invitational. As we're going to head over to the sideboards, you're the red man. He's got to turn some things around here. What can he do? Two Shock, three Searing Blood, two Magma Jet, three Dalmry, 
a forest, a ranger's gyro, two skull cracks, and an arm dangerous. I like bringing in the two copies of skull crack in this matchup. Uh, of course, it gives you a lot of flexibility racing something like Blood Baron. There may be gray merchants, even Farika's cures in Jared's list of post boards, so skull crack can do some good work there. I actually like Searing Blood against Jared's list. I'm a big fan of Searing Blood against black decks that are playing Life Bane Zombie alongside Pack Rat and Mutavault, as your opponents often compel to block with Mutavault to stabilize the game. So Searing Blood can be good there. And uh, possibly he wants the Domrys as well, as he's got to slog through a lot of removal spells. It is a little weird to bring in Domri alongside five spells. But Tom does have some spells of his own in his main deck that he can cut because they're not that well applied here. Uh, specifically, Madcap skills, Titan strength, Arm dangerous. The types of cards that are susceptible to instant speed removal spells, he can get away from and bring in some more powerful cards. On Bet Your Side, I see it's up a game. There are two copies of Sin Collector, two Duress, two copies of Blind Obedience, along with two more Life Bane Zombies, then a bunch of Singletons, an Ultimate Price, Dark Betrayal, Devour Flesh, Bile Blight, Rook Existence, another copy of Variable Scott of the Dead, and a Nobs Attack Ghost Count. So obviously a lot of options here for the Black White Devotion player. Uh, the ones that seem the best are Blind Obedience to start. Uh, you could make an argument for Duress. I definitely like Ultimate. Actually, I, I take that back. I don't like Ultimate Price. There are a lot of hybrid cards here in Russ's deck between Burning Tree Mystery, Cackler, and Fanatic and goes that I could actually see Ultimate Price getting stranded. Uh, Devour Flesh seems fine. Bio Blight seems fine. Uh, the Oves of that, while it is a little bit of ex a little expensive, huge body and gaining life is going to be pretty important here. Yeah, it's it's interesting how Jared wants to approach the matchup. I definitely get the... Uh, I understand the argument for getting away from situational removal like Ultimate Price, but in my experience playing red aggro decks, the way that Black Devotion or Black White Devotion beats you is just removal spell, removal spell into a big creature. Mm -hmm. Almost doesn't matter what they kill, as long as they're keeping their head above water killing anything. So even if Ultimate Price gets stranded in his hand a percentage of the time, or it isn't always going to be able to kill the best thing in play, just keeping your head above water and getting to the point where you can deploy Desecration Demon or Ubzadat or Blood Baron is a winning recipe. One card you're not going to find on the sideboard of Betcher's Black White Devotion deck is Drown in Sorrow. We not too surprised to see that, but if decks like Ross's really do start to pick up a little bit, Drown and Sorrow is a great tool against them. Mm -hmm. That being said, uh, very quickly about Jared Betcher, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with Tom Ross and his resume, but again, Jared Betcher has been on one heck of a run over the past couple of months here. Runner-up at Grand Prix Washington, D.C. before losing to Owen Turtwell in the finals, and the following week wins a PTQ to qualify for his first Pro Tour. At his first Pro Tour, gets ninth place playing Ad Nauseam Angel's Grace at Pro Tour Born of the Gods. You add in an open series win with Sneak and Show, uh, where after the Grand Prix, he lost that deck in the finals and then won a Legacy Open with that deck, as well as Grand Prix Cincinnati last weekend, where he was the number one seed going to the elimination rounds before being knocked up by Brad Nelson in the semifinals. This is one of the hottest players in Magic in the world. Yeah, when we spoke at the very beginning of the broadcast, I said Jared was the player I was actually most interested in watching this weekend, as I do not think that his reputation has caught up to his results yet. I agree. He's been destroying tournaments over the past six months. He's still a relatively anonymous player, and an Invitational Top 8 or even Top 16 this weekend could do a lot to raise his vis visibility even further. And he is currently up a game here again. He gave Brian Verón to win his first loss. He played Red White Painter in the Legacy portion, and now he's playing Black White Devotion here. So we're going to see if Tom Ross can even things up here. Being on the play is a huge deal for Tom. We'll see if he can kind of maybe steal this one and move on to a game three. The most interesting thing to me about Tom's 75 is the complete absence of Mizium borders. That means that certain four toughest creatures, he can only really power through backdoor ways. For example, when your opponent has Blood Baron, you can use Gorkhal and Rampager to attack through it. You can use Legion Loyalist alongside Lightning Strike to kill it if he blocks anything. Mm -hmm. But there's no clean answers. So Jared's plethora of powerful four toughness creatures in the matchup. Grey Merchant and Blood Baron have the potential to cause Tom some serious problems. It's going to be a tough road ahead. It looks like Jared's deck is pretty well situated for this matchup. Now, I know Packrat's not terribly scary um, for the red deck, but you know the fact that there are Grey Merchants, there are Blood Barons, there are Knife Hill Spectres, Desecration Demons here, all in varying numbers. Again, a lot of the times with these black base devotion decks, you see very concrete numbers of four Desecration Demon, four Pack Rat, four something else, maybe three or something else, and then moving on to a bunch of spells. Jared has a lot of creatures, four Pack Rats, three Grey Merchants, two Blood Barons, three Nightfield Spectres, two Lifebane Zombies, two Desecration Demons, and, and one Erebos, God of the Dead, and then he has spells, so he's much more creature heavy this go around. Yeah, and I think that once you have a lot of temples in your deck, which, which Jared does, I think that you want to have kind of a diversity or spread of cards like he does, because you're already conceding that you're not going to be able to cast your spells on time. Yeah. So the model Black Devotion, where they just get to curve out with their perfect curve, 
of every game isn't a reality for Jared anyway. So at that point, I'd rather have just options for having a mixture of effects. We are underway in game number two. Tom Ross of the Fire Drinker Stager before passing the turn back over to Betcher. He's going to play a Temple of Silence. Drew a Blood Baron for the turn. Top card's going to go to the bottom as we move back to Ross, who draws a copy of Madcap Skills for the turn. Madcap Skills is pretty interesting for me that it's still in his deck post board because if Jared's sideboarding in anything, it's almost certainly removal spells. It does give him some shot of winning a game in the event that, you know, Jared taps out for a Blood Baron. He's expecting to stabilize the board. Ross going to play a Temple of Abandon. Does Scry, attacks for two with the Seder, plays another one, passes the turn back. Betcher with just a Swamp, representing your removal spell right now. Ross going to play a Fanatic of Xenagos, put the Tribute Trigger on the stack. Yeah, a Really nice curve. Tom is playing right into a Bioblade, and yep. Jared has it. And unfortunately for Tom, that's a he, Jared has one in his sideboard and then two in his main deck, so he was able to have one of those. Betcher just plays a land, passes the turn back. Ross going to attack here. Does Betcher have removal spell? He does. Here's downfall, curving out very, very nicely here. Ross going to play a Temple of Abandon. Going to put the top card, leave it on top, follow up his Domri Rad. That card presumably is going to go to his hand, which it will. It's another Fanatic. Pass the turn back. Betcher will untap. He'll take a draw. It's a Desecration Demon. And this is the curve that's really hard for red aggro decks to beat. It's yep. just removal spell, removal spell, Desecration Demon. And there is the 6-6 six, six Flyer. So Ross is going to untap. He's going to take a draw. It's a Mountain. And this is part of the reason I'm, I'm low the times to go to Planeswalkers against Mono Black because it, it even greatly increases your exposure to Desecration Demon, which is already the hardest card for you to beat. There's the Fanatic. Tribute here. We'll see what Betcher wants to do. And again, Tom has that, has that Madcap skills, and that's one of the few cards he might be able to use to ride to victory here. It's not pretty, but it may get the job done. I mean, he would have to really steal this one if... Yep. Uh, here's an attack, bluffing a Gorkland Rampager. I kind of like it. I don't think he's bluffing. Yeah, you never know. Well, he does have it. And also what he gets to do, he gets to fight, too, to get that thing off the table. So that's a beautiful turn there from Ross. Yep, very nice. Got to hit for a bunch of damage and remove the really troubling Desecration Demon, something that, for example, Mono Red doesn't have access to. This yeah. is a line of play specific to Ross's deck. Giving himself the best chance to win. You see Betcher. Does have a Blood Baron, does have a fifth land that he can play. Not sure if he has another removal spell over there or not. Well, you know, Jared's got to be really concerned if Tom has some way to kill this thing, if he has Mizzium Mortars in his hand or something else. Madcap skills in Tom's hand. This is a really good turn for Madcap skills. Yes, it is. How does Ross want to use that Domri is the question. He's going to tick up. Let's see what he finds. It's a miss. With Gore Clan Rampager, that could have been lethal. Yep. Ross is going to play Madcap Skills. He's going to come across here. Looks like an attack for six. There's a Legion Loyalist back on defense. Pass the turn back. Betcher's at four. Billy to go up to eight as he draws a card. It's a swamp. But if he doesn't have a removal spell in the hand, it's pretty risky for him uh -huh. to attack here. He's got another copy of Blood Bear in his hand. That's what he's got. Here's an attack. Goes after Domri. Legion Loyalist can't block fast enough. Betcher up to eight. There's a Godless Shrine. This is a Grey Merchant for three. So Betcher's going to go up to 11. Ross down to 17. And going up to 11 is critical here, as it means even if the top card on Ross's deck is a Madcap Skills, Jared's not dead. Yep. That's why you see him play Grey Merchant that turn instead of another Blood Baron. So Betcher beginning to stabilize. Ross trying to finish it off if he can. Can use Domri to fight the Grey Merchant here. Not sure if that's the most appealing play, but that's certainly one option afforded to him. Because he has to pres he has to assume that he's going to lose his Domri next turn to a Blood Baron attacking it. Correct. So he's going to tick down. He's going to fight Grey Merchant. He's going to come across for six. Betcher's going to go down to five. Ross, his top card did not get hit by Domri, so he just has to pass the turn back. Betcher's going to untap. He'll take a draw. This could also be a really good spot for Skullcrack. Yep. No skull crack here, though. Domri's going to bite the dust. Betcher's going to go up to nine. He's going to play a land. That is a Blood Baron of Scopa with Mutavault available, which means Madcap skills. The creature can be blocked. In we go. Here's an activation. Looks like it's time for a double block. That is a Gore Clan Rampager. So this is going to cause the, the Fanatic to actually survive. 
Yeah, so, uh, yeah, seven toughness. It's going to eat both of those things. Betcher will gain a little bit of life. So now it's Fnatic versus Blood Bear, and Betcher doesn't have a spell in his hand. Let's see what he draws to copy a Knife Veil Spectre. So the race is still on here. I thought it was unlikely that Madcap skills would be good against Jared post board, but it has been incredible yeah. this game. I do kind of like it. That, that Gore Clan Rampager was timely. There is a Knife Veil Spectre. Will Betcher attack? And he will. Up to 13 he goes. Ross goes down to 13. Let's see what Tom can find. Draws his card. Trying to figure out if he can attack, and he will. So an attack for six, going to put Betcher down to seven. We're not blocking, I'll that's, tell you that That's much. for sure. <laughs> Passes it back. Ross will, excuse me, Betcher will draw. It's a swamp. He's got two lands in his hand, two creatures on the board. Will he ever pump the brakes is the question. Well, there's all sorts of dangerous things he incurs by pumping the brakes. If, for example, Ross draws Domri and is able to fight the Night Veil Spectre, then it, everything goes downhill. Yeah. So. Jared going to sit back and try to double block here, but that is that is a fairly risky line. And the other thing, too, is that Tom doesn't have to attack. We can play this little game of standoff. Yeah. I mean, Jared's favored from that position as he has way more high-impact spells. I mean, just something like Hero's Downfall will probably end the game yep. if Jared is able to find it. So I think he's happy to play a draw-go game. Now here comes the Blood Baron. Took one turn off, but it'll come in now. Ross is going to go down to nine. Betcher up to 11. Betcher's draw was a Night Veil Spectre, which he's going to deploy. We'll see if he plays one of those lands or not. He will not. He'll just pass back the turn. Ross is going to untap. You see, I think he's got another copy of Madcap Skills in his hand right now. He's looking for a card like a Skullcracker, just some sort of removal spell. Lightning Strike would be great. Yeah, it's unclear if Skullcrack even came in. Yep. I mean, there's no guarantee. So... Ross definitely up against it right now. It looks like his hand is Cackler Madcap skills. Yeah, I believe that's the case. There is the Cackler. It's going to be unleashed. Pass the turn back. Betcher going to quickly untap. He's going to take a draw. Can't quite see it. It's definitely a spell, though. Appears to be blind obedience. Not bad. Well, it would have been good several turns ago. That's this is for sure. Less attractive now, certainly. Betcher deciding how he can attack here, if he even wants to attack. We saw him take a turn off before. What's really critical about this Blind Obedience is assuming that Ross takes hit, this hit and the following one, that the Blind Obedience represents lethal if Jared ca is able to draw any castable spell. Well, here is the Blind Obedience. Going to pass the turn back. Ross will take a draw. He's got a couple cards in his hand over there. He adds this card to the grip. If he has a way to actually kill a Night Veil Spectre and Madcap skills his, his creature, I believe he has lethal. Ash Shell is going to come into the red zone. Or actually, it's going to be tapped and pass the turn back. I apologize. I think it's time for the, uh, the Fanatic to maybe bite the dust here. Yeah. I mean, Ross has held out as long as he can, trying to give himself as many opportunities to draw a lightning strike oh, or now we're getting, something. Now we're getting real aggressive. The Flyers are coming in. Blood Baron's going to push Betcher up to 15. Here's a couple of triggers. Lightning Strike and a Mutavolt there. Mutavolt's going to come into play. Not so bad. Betcher will pass the turn back. Ross with a searing blood in his hand. He'll take a draw. Madcap skills. You see a forest. There's a searing blood over there. And there's the Madcap skills on the Cackler. An attack here. Just passing the turn back, hoping that maybe Betcher won't attack or draw a spell. But Betcher did draw a spell. It's an Underworld Connections. And with the Extort from Blind Obedience, that is going to do it. Jared Betcher is going to win this match, move on to 11-2, giving Tom Ross his second defeat. Black-White Devotion taking down Red-Green Aggro. Yeah, I think Jared's build for the matchup is quite good. He's got a lot of cheap removal. He's got a, several Haymakers in Desecration Demon and Blood Baron. He has Night Veil Spectre Main, which seems like a subtle thing, but definitely matters. Yep. And was able to, I mean, there are definitely some harrowing turns there, but was comfortably in the driver's seat there for both games. You know.